I want to first welcome everybody to come a little closer so that we can all hear and be part of the celebration. Thank you, thank you. There are so many of you. It's wonderful to see you. I am Ann Lezak, chair of the Vermont Democratic Party. And I could not be prouder and more excited to welcome you all tonight. This is a very, very big night for us. I want to start by giving a very brief quote from Jamie Harrison, the DNC chair. He gave us chairs a little virtual pep talk last night. And I want to share what he said. Jamie Harrison said, hope is on the ballot. Freedom is on the ballot. Democracy is on the ballot. Here in Vermont, we know that in our bones. And we have been working as hard as we can to make sure that those values, those Vermont values, are represented in our candidates and in the incredible people who I've had the pleasure and honor to work with and who are going to be representing us at every level. I first want to welcome up everybody, attention please. I want to welcome up someone who we all want to hear from because this is someone who has known and lived hope and freedom and democracy for many, many years here in Vermont. And I am so honored to welcome our beloved Senator, Senator Leahy. <laughs> and Marcel, who are joining us up on stage now. What a way to start the evening. So and I got a kick out of hearing uh, he hearing trucking uh, because that's become something we played every one of my elections on election night. I think the first time they thought maybe I'd play it because I may be trucking out of there because I wasn't supposed to win. But it has been so wonderful to do it. Marcel and I have enjoyed all these years seeing all of you here. And back a couple months ago, I'm not going anywhere. Oh, okay. Good. The, uh, after, after a month in the hospital with Marcel taking care of me, teaching me how to walk again, I'm glad she's here. But uh, about two or three years ago, we started thinking about where, where this is going what would be the legacy. I felt one, it was time we wanted to go. Uh, we figured up between primaries and general elections, state's attorney and the Senate. I've been on the ballot in Vermont 24 times, and that should be enough for most people. <laughs> and, uh, and so we made up our mind, and as announced a year ago, that we're going to go home and be back at home, have more time with children and grandchildren. But I also saw the way the country is going. And I, this is not a, a plug, but I wrote a book just a, finished a couple of months ago called The Path Taken. And I've talked about the downward arc of much of what we've counted on, both Republicans and Democrats in the U.S. Senate, and how badly it's gone. And I worried about that for the future. We saw on January 6th the example, the worst aspect of that. The one thing that gave me uh, hope at all during this time is watching 
who would be the next senator? I'm not, I don't want a, somebody to be a rubber stamp or be a, a duplicate. I want somebody to have Vermont values. Peter Welch has those values and he's our next senator. <laughs> Every, I was telling Peter earlier this evening, every time during these past few months, the senators, whether they're running for re-election or just watching elections, have asked me, what is Peter Welch like? I said, you could not ask for a better senator. I don't care what party you're in. You couldn't ask for a better senator because he has the true value, as I point out in the book and as I learned. He keeps his word. You can trust him. He cares about our state of Vermont. Now, I got to admit, my first campaign was called the Children's Crusade. We had all these young volunteers, including this young new attorney down the far western uh, or eastern side of the state, rather, in Windsor County, called Peter Welch. Look who Peter Welch is. Every single one of you on January 3rd at noon, when Peter stands there and takes the oath of office, you can say, Vermont, all of us, we're in good hands. A lot of states aren't going to be able to say that. Vermont can. Vermont can say, but well, Peter won't. So, right? Marcel and I want to welcome Peter and Margaret up here. This is our future. Let's hear it again for Patrick and Marcel. It's a big Irish family. <laughs> it, it is a big family. Uh, thank you all so much. First of all, I want to thank my wife, Margaret, for all she's done. <laughs> and these are, like, everybody behind me is the big Irish family and friends. <laughs> they, they, they have only begun to misbehave. 
And I want to thank uh, Ryan McLaren, my campaign manager. <laughs> and Ryan, I want to thank you and our whole campaign staff, which is the best in the entire country. And I do also want to thank, again, and I can't stop thanking him enough, Patrick Leahy and his wife, Marcel. 48 years of service with integrity, with honesty, with standing up for democracy every single day of those 48 years. Patrick and Marcel, thank you so much. <clears throat> And Bernie Sanders, my partner for 16 years. Bernie was so shy and so holding back that it took him one hour to endorse me after I announced. <laughs> Bernie, thank you very much for that endorsement. You know, it's, it, it, it's, a, it's an extraordinary time in our democracy. We know that. We're excited about the outcome of the election here for the U.S. Senate. But this election is in the shadow of what happened on January 6th. And as we are here today celebrating this moment, there's votes being cast, there's votes being counted, but it's uncertain whether all election results will be accepted. And I was there when the Capitol was attacked and the shot was fired and the doors were broken down. And everyone was dismayed because this election, unlike any other election, has democracy right front and center on the ballot. And our mission here in Vermont is to restore and defend and protect the democracy that we value so much in this small state. You know, so a, a lot of people have asked me, Peter, you know, how do you do it? Or how can we all do it after what happened on January 6th? And you know, the answer to that, we don't pick the times we're in. We don't pick the challenges those times present. The choice we make is to face those challenges, whatever they may be. That's what we do. And you know, I have so much confidence that we Vermonters will do that again. And our example will be a beacon of hope for the rest of the country. Look at our history. No, look at our collective history. This is all of us. Ours was the first state, the first state in its constitution to ban slavery. And when our country was riven by the Civil War, it was Vermonters more than any other by population who enlisted in the Union cause to save our Union and to ban and abolish slavery. And in the midst of that, with all those challenges, it was a predecessor of Patrick Leahy, Justin Morrill, who created the land-grant college where there was a fundamental commitment to the educational opportunity of everyday people, Vermonters who wanted to get ahead. <clears throat> and you know, when it came to the question of whether every citizen should have the opportunity to marry the person that that person loves, it was the Vermont General Assembly with Republicans and Democrats who said the law of this state is you have the right to marry the person you love. <laughs> and even fast for Patrick Leahy, preceded by George Aiken, who said it all, when he said about Vietnam, a war that was misguided, was tearing our country apart, causing heartbreak and loss of life, said we should declare victory and come home. 
<clears throat> and who was the senator that succeeded him and cast his first vote to end funding for the Vietnam War? That was Patrick Leahy. So what we've seen in our history is that we don't pick the problems, we face the problems. And you know, some folks think it's like a farmer farms in the weather that the farmer wants. No way. It's the weather you have. And it's the problems we have. And a big problem and a challenge we face is democracy and we are going to face it. And you know what's also special about Vermont? It's the way we do democracy. It's the small d democracy. It's mutual respect. It's humility that understands that a person that you disagree with, maybe even vehemently, is most likely guided by the same aspiration you have to make this a better state. We understand that listening is more important than talking. And that by having an approach where we seek the common ground for the common good, we can make a better and more just society. So I got to tell you, <clears throat> I am so excited about the challenges ahead and how we can face them. And I'm looking forward to doing that with who I know will be our next member of Congress, Becca Ballant, the first woman to represent us in Congress. And Becca and Bernie and I are going to be there in the way all Vermonters want to be there. We know that this state that fought for marriage equality, we know that this state that stood up to Joe McCarthy when he was trying to take our, away our civil liberties, we know that this state that banned slavery in its original constitutional document, we know that this state offers America hope for the future. And with the Vermont way, we can be successful and face the challenges that are before us. And I am so excited to be your representative in the United States Senate to take those Vermont values to Washington. Thank you. Everyone, I want to say that it's incredible to see this amazing family of blood relatives, yeah! but we are, so yes, actually, let's give them all a cheer. Yeah! But guess what? Peter has a much larger family than that. We are all family to Peter Welch in this room. And we could not be more excited to be sending our Vermont brother to the U.S. Senate. So thank you, thank you. We are now in a little bit of a waiting period. So everybody, go refresh your drink, chit chat. We will be back very soon, as soon as we have more results. Thank you very much. <laughs>